Who counted on Grimmy? Grimmy, a senior, also is a member of a regional championship golf team. It was. And, and that's a hard right hit ball, but at right at the second baseman. That seems to be the way it goes for the Bluebirds last couple of nights. Put out goes 4-3 as um, Hamilton takes care of Grimmy on the ground, and that'll do it. And, uh, you know, no got all the way to third, but it wasn't, wasn't enough after the walk. Just can't seem to get that hit. See, looks like Hagus is in on the mound now. So we have a pitching change for the Bluebirds. It's going to be junior righty Brennan Hagus. Uh, also a football player for the Bluebirds. Pretty good. And that's as well. I guess he'll uh, take over the kicking duties for Nick Bowman since he's graduating. I guess. Uh, he's got a little bit of everything. He's got linebacker. I heard he might play some O-line. Yeah, he's a heck of a good he's athlete. He's got everything. Uh, but he will probably assume the kicking duty. Now, there could be a soccer player, I hear, that might be thinking about uh, doing some place kicking for the Bluebirds. I don't know what Coach Nieder and Coach Weiner think about that. but Yeah, I mean, we're talking about we're seeing what all they might want. I think the Beachwood coaches are motioning up here that it's 4 nothing, and we know that. Yeah. But we're not in the press box. I do have – Beachwood's um, contact here. Let me, <laughs> um, and she is over in the press box yeah. Ooh. working their broadcast. Let me see if I can give her a call. So. Uh, Hagus is up on the mound now. They're working the broadcast for the Tigers, and she's going to check out. Ooh, base hit off of Hagus. That is number 32, uh, Devin yeah. Johnson with a shot. Bridewell Dove came up empty, and the Beachwood Tigers have their leadoff hitter on once again. And that has not been a good recipe for the Bluebirds <laughs> so far. Of course, we struck out the leadoff hitter last inning, but it went downhill after that. Stepping in for the Tigers is in the Dover Spike spot. So can you get a number on that, Let's Nick? See what we got here, yeah. Get our binoculars up here, see if we can get a number on the hitter. It's a new hitter for the Tigers. Nice lead over there by Johnson. Highest to the plate, yeah. it's a ball. Will Rolfe. It was at 47? 27. 27, Will Rolfe in for Dover Spike. And he'll be the new hitter for the Beachwood. It's chopper there to it's Kavanaugh. Chopper to short, it's going to be. Go to first. Wow, it's a good arm by Kavanaugh to cut down Rolfe on the ground. Put out goes 6-3, one down. Uh, Johnson moved on into scoring position, though. Too, hit too slowly to get, try to turn two there. And uh, there's one down. And it looks like the pitcher, Berger, is going to step in for the Tigers. He flew out to second base in the first. High gets to the plate, and Berger swings through it. He's keeping an eye on Johnson back there. Nick, did you take the ACT? I did take the ACT. How'd that go for you? I mean, I did what I could. That was my third time taking it so far. Wow, so. I took it one time. <laughs> That's what everyone says. I didn't do it very <laughs> well. I know all us old people, you only, <laughs> it wasn't even that big of a deal yeah. back then, and he, and he only took it once. And that was I that. think the, you know, the goal was to get into whatever college you were getting in. But, you know, we talked about Mr. Poff's uh, broadcasting program. His daughter, Zoe, yeah. got a perfect score. Yeah. I hear the astronomical odds on getting a perfect score. Um, and I don't know exactly how that works, but I think I had heard she missed like a one on yeah. one of the sections. And uh, 
Earned a 36. That's pretty good. Yeah, so. We've had a number of 36s this year from Highlands. Really? Yeah, I know. I know that Alexander, um, uh, you know, the the guy that worked on the, uh, I can't believe I forgot Harrison. his last name. Harrison. Alex Alexander Harrison got, Harrison got 36 last year and a other couple other Soccer folks. goalkeeper, Will Burnham. Yeah, Will 36. Burnham, yeah. That was last year. We're talking about this year. That was year's last year, okay. Class. okay. Oh, just well, Zoe, Alex so is a Zoe, senior. was there anybody else? Alex is a senior. Huh? Alex is a senior. Well, yeah. Okay. But, I mean, of this year's okay. test, okay. this year's round. I didn't hear anybody other than Zoe no. yet. Ripped a cat. That is hit knocks hard. Kevin all knocks it down, picks it up, throws Burger out for out number two. Boy, was that hit hard. <laughs> Woo. See, I keep that ball in front of him. That was right. Hit right to him. Uh, Johnson moves 90 feet closer over to third, and there's two down. Looks like Jackson Knoll is going to come back for his second at bat. He struck out to lead off the second. Lefty steps in. Johnson, small lead off third. And Higgis' is offering is wide of the plate. Haggis has three pitches. He's got that fastball, curveball, and a changeup if he's feeling it. Caught him this summer in summer ball. So wow. That was fun. Good job, Nick. <laughs> you ever think about going out for the Highlands team? Eh, sometimes, but I also just like to have a break during the spring. Yeah. Club soccer, too. A lot of soccer, yeah. Year-round. So what team do you play for summer? Summer? Yeah. Oh, well, we had a little. It's called the Blue Hawks, and just a bunch of guys from Highlands. We right. Go out there in the Knothole League or Southwest yeah, uh, Ohio. Northern Kentucky baseball. And oh, KB. okay. Different. Yeah. And their tournament was always at Florence Freedom, so that was always fun to do. Yeah. Strike. Uh, Highgis gets another strike on Noel, and he's one and two with two down. If Highgis can get out of here. I guess sets to the plate. There's his Outside. curveball. Outside. Devin Johnson bit. waiting for any mistake from Trent Johnson, the catcher, so he can come on home for that fifth run for the Tigers. Still three <laughs> up on the board for Beachwood, even though we called the I press box. Right. And they were aware of the error, okay. but uh, working to fix it. I mean, we'll take it if they only won three yeah, runs. Have. I mean, hey. <laughs> Way outside. I think there's one. your curveball that didn't curve. Yeah. Didn't come back. Full count on Noel. We really need a clean inning here from the Birds, and Trent Johnson's going to go talk to his pitcher, Higgins, on the full count, two outs. And... Um, I don't know if Johnson's probably telling him sometimes people are on the move with three, two, two outs, but Noel is probably being told by his third base coach not to go too far. Yeah. You don't want to run into the third out of the inning there if there's a walk. Hyga sets, throws, and got strike playing. three got him. That was a big out for the birds. Let's see if we can get something going in the uh, – Bottom half of three oh, here. And there Moving you go. right along, Nick. One hit for Beachwood in that inning, and finally an inning where there's no errors and no runs scored. One left on, and uh, middle of the third, the score is 4 0 Tigers. And the scoreboard got it now. They were probably waiting until the end <laughs> of the inning to make the change. We do have a pitching change again for Beachwood. On the mound now is 36, Jack Flaherty. Oh, Jack Flaherty is the son of uh, Fort Thomas Schools Assistant Superintendent Jamie Flaherty. She's such a hard worker, and she's up for Northern Kentucky uh, Administrator of the Year Award that, that she'll uh, get to go receive here soon. And it's so much fun working with her. And I ran into her today in the hallway, and she said that Jack, we had a chance to pitch in this one today. So good luck to her son. I know they're a baseball family, and uh, she's probably looking forward to watching him pitch on the uh, 
mound here at Great American Ballpark. I don't know where he fits into the batting lineup, Nick, but yeah, we'll, just have to figure we'll that wait out we until he there. comes to the play, yeah. It's going to be left fielder Kyle Winkler leading it all for the Bluebirds as they finally get through their lineup for the first time here to start the bottom half of three. Well, you know, our eighth grade is in D.C. If yeah. I was still teaching eighth grade, Nick, I'd be somewhere <laughs> around a war monument or a Lincoln Memorial or something like that, but I'm not. So best of luck to all the eighth grade, and I hope they're having fun. And also, are we the people team is in That's Washington, right. D.C. Competing Lots for a national on. championship. And Megan Boyman hennies and Mike Hills are there, and they do a great job yes. with that team. I think – They've won something ridiculous, like 15 straight state yeah. titles. And uh, hopefully we can come home with a national title one of these times. But I would imagine that's some stiff competition. Now, We the People is uh, they go and what, they try to pass a bill or argue yeah, a court yeah. case. Yeah, I think it's or, a bill. It's a bill. That's what I thought. Mock trial does Mock the court trial cases. The court. Winkler steps in. The first pitch from Flaherty is fouled back. And he's quickly uh, on top of uh, 0 and 1. So we wish luck to the We the People team, coached by Miss Boyman and Mr. Hills, and hope they have a good time. I spoke to the team before they left, and they were excited. And it's a class that uh, Miss Boyman and throughout has throughout the day. Uh, and um, hope they they do well. We'd like a national title. Curveball from Flaherty, and it is hit gently to the shortstop who takes care of it right at the second base bag and Winkler's retired and there's one down so Flaherty gets through his first batter and Kavanaugh uh, back to the plate for the Bluebirds he uh, singled back in the first thing to lead off the ball game and if I remember correctly it was hit hard through the right side and he unloads one Wow, and that is off the wall, off the left center field fence, and Kavanaugh has a stand-up double. Wow, was that rip. hit hard. I didn't even see the ball after it left the infield, <laughs> and I thought it might be out of here. I thought that, too. Uh, but where did it hit? About halfway up the wall? Yeah. I didn't even see it. Hit right on that NCC logo out there. I could tell that it was hit hard, but, again, I lost it. <laughs> So, Kavanaugh's got a single and a double, and the Birds have a runner scoring position with one down, and Chris Pridewell steps in. And he hit the ball hard last time, and he fouls one into the Highlands dugout. And that's a barehanded catch over there Off by the one head. of the reserves. I couldn't tell whose hand nah. that was, <laughs> but it was a nice grab. Off of the netting. Bridewell. Flaherty to the plate. It's low. Count evens at one and one. Flaherty's paying a lot of attention to Kavanaugh out there. I second. would be too. A lot yeah. of speed. Down four to nothing. I don't know if we should be stealing third, buddy. Oh no. I think you got to stay put and hope for a couple more hits. That ball Straight gets, back. If that ball gets in play. Kavanaugh's most likely making a round, so he can probably stay home now. Wait for that ball to get. Yeah. Bridewell fouls it back. It's one and two. One down. Kavanaugh with a short lead off second. The shortstop and second baseman both holding him on, which is odd to look at. <laughs> Curveball and hanging there. Boy, I'm telling you, if we don't have bad luck, <laughs> hit hard again right at the shortstop where he happened to be standing with holding Kavanaugh on. Kavanaugh moves to third, and there's two down. Put out goes 6-3. That's two hard hit balls. Uh, by Bridewell on the day, but Unlucky. nothing to show for it. Schwabach steps in, uh, the center fielder. Good chance here to he get a run here for the walked back Bluebirds. in the first. Kavanaugh creeping off third. Uh, pitches ball high. Schwabach's having a heck of a season. He was our starting running back, did a great job. Uh, scored some touchdowns. I can't remember how many now since that was yeah, way back in the fall so long ago. But uh, he was the guy who ran out with the American flag every Friday night. That was a popular thing. We had the Kentucky flag as well. He's just a, a good guy, and he's 
an aide in my office. Fifth period. <laughs> he fouls one back into the seats, and it's two and one. So Kavanaugh, the short lead off third. Nobody holding him on. He's creeping down the line. Schwabach up. hits a moon ball. It's going to stay on the infield. Second baseman oh. takes off, and it's a snow cone out in short right center field by the Tiger shortstop, and that will put an end to the Bluebird threat. And the third inning, and at the end of three, Tigers lead 4-0. to zero. He almost dropped it, though. Almost. He was struggling a little bit with that. I think it went up. Maybe got lost in the lights up there. Well, I've caught on to the fly balls now. <laughs> Those are the la I've called the first two wrong, thinking they were heading to the outfield. But the last few I've gotten, and that was um, that was kind of a strange play. It looked like the second baseman didn't want any part of that. Uh. He, like, ran off the field. <laughs> um. But the Bluebirds get ahead, but nothing to show for it. Well, I've said it before, Nick, and I'll say it again. Not much luck for the Birds. Um, Hitting the ball. As far as things falling in, you know. Sometimes you get those Texas leaguers or – uh, you hit them where they ain't, but in the last couple of games, boy, yeah, the defense from Moeller and now Beachwood are playing in the positions they need to play in to retire the birds. Yeah. It's not like Hans is playing a bad game either. I mean, a mistake here and there, and that's four runs for Beachwood. Well, you know, hopefully – the hits start to fall. I mean, you keep hitting the ball that hard, eventually it'll get by. Good things will happen. Yeah. So, well, is it Haggis back out there? Haggis is still out there. So Brennan Haggis taking the mound for his second go around. Looks like this is number eighteen, Clay Trusty. Yeah, sure. Clay Trusty had the double and scored back in the second. He was the one that hit it where Nolan Turner That's right, right field gave the diving attempt. So, Trusty stands in against Higgis. Higgis sets. He's coming to the plate. And Just a it's bit called outside. ball one. I guess it was a little outside. Looked pretty good to me, buddy. <laughs> but J.D. Young, he was in the state tournament last year as a 9th region representative. He says, nah. <laughs> Our officials for today's game, J.D. Young's behind the plate. He was at Whitaker Bank Ballfield last year. Ron Rawl, Don Ches Martin, and Don, uh, Dan Eplin out on the basis for the Bluebirds. So good opportunity for the Northern Kentucky Officials Association getting to put uh, four out. And Perry Wing does the assigning for high school baseball in the ninth region. Does a heck of a good job. So I'm sure he sends four of his best out here for this one. Four pitch and walk. a four-pitch walk issued to Trusty by Higgis, and I guarantee you this, it's going to be a courtesy runner out of the dugout for the there Tigers. And here he comes, because Trusty's the catcher. So you can run for him for no substitution penalty. Looks like maybe we have a new batter. Yeah, it looks like we got Carter Noah. Up to bat for what the What number is he? Number he four. Number four, yeah. Number four, Carter Noah going into the books here. He yeah, replaces he Hamilton, uh, at least in the batting order. Fly out left field. And it looks like our left fielder, Kyle Winkler, will take care of it. And after one pitch, Noah is retired in the air, one down. We got another new batter for the Tigers, Colin Henry. Okay, so John Odom is subbed for anyway. Now, you can re-enter in high school baseball yeah. one time for the exact person that went in for you. Uh, what number we got on this guy? Number one. Number one. That one's barrel wow, on ball he right hits to Winkler it hard, again. But right at the left fielder, Winkler, and he makes the play. Out number two. That was a loud out. What did you say this guy's name was? That was Colin Henry. Colin Henry, boy, did he hit it hard. 
but it was a head high line drive handled by Kyle Winkler and there's two down quickly in the top of the fourth. Castleman's back up. Logan Castleman back up at the plate. This is third about it. He has a walk, scored, and a double. Where he collected two RBIs. And he cleared the bases back in the second. So, Tigers versus Castleman with the pinch runner. And last time it was Fieger, so I'm going to assume it's him again out there on first. Boy, is that wow. ball scorched. <laughs> but Trey Gabbard. Had his glove on the ground, just like he was taught. Takes it himself, and that'll end the Beachwood fourth. So the birds hit a couple balls hard, and I was kind of complaining about it. Now Beachwood <laughs> smokes a couple balls. One to left field by the pinch hitter, Colin Henry. And Castleman, boy, that might have been the hardest hit of the game. Hardest hit ball of the game by either team. But Trey Gabbard was able to put a glove on it and beat Castleman to the bag for the final out of the top of the fourth. Hopefully, Nick, the birds can get on the board here. Yeah, that would be very nice if we can get the bats going. So we've talked about We the People. We've talked about Mr. Poff's theater program. We've talked about the ACT test, the eighth grade trip, the talent show. What else? What else do we have? What else do we have going I'll on? I'll tell you, the girls' tennis team, we had a couple doubles, uh, Katie Johnson and uh, Ashley Coulter, Ada Donlin. I shouldn't have started naming names because I'm going to forget one, but I got him here on a text. Coach Kevin Listerman, and uh, he's got his two JV doubles, and they have um, advanced in the JV tournament. Let's see. Uh, I'm looking for the text message from Mr. Listerman and Coach Lasky. It was Donlin and uh, – Studer advancing eight to one, and Coulter and Katie Johnson eight nothing. Wow. And um, so the JV girls tennis doubles both advance in the JV regional. I'll tell you, our, I think our boys tennis team something like 12, 12 and one. Peter Lasky at number one yeah. singles, and you got senior Jacob Shue, and there's a lot of. Uh, uh, Jackson Hoppers Jackson on Hopper. that team. Yeah, they got a lot of good players too. It's a new pitcher again for Beachwood. Beachwood puts up another arm on the mound, so that'll do it for Flaherty. There's so many changes. We knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Who do we got at the plate? We got Jake, Ziegler. Or uh, yeah, the plate we got Ziegler on the mound. We have Jacob Norton. Jacob Norton on the mound for what number is Norton? Seven. Seven. First pitch is a ball high. Ziggler watch it, watches it go past. I'll tell you, Nick, you did a lot of homework on these rosters, but he's got a lot of stats here. <laughs> I'll tell you, somebody's got to replace Trey Gabbard as the stat man for varsity basketball this year. Maybe you yeah. want to do that. I'll, I'm, I will. Anywhere well, you, have, you need me. You have to talk to – Anywhere you need me. You have to talk to Miss Richie. I think <laughs> she uh, – we mentioned Stephen Grimmie was a member of that uh, regional champion boys golf team, and Burt Rich does a nice job with them. And uh, I think he was coach of the year, and then Jamie yes. Rich was also yes. coach of the year for girls basketball. A successful household that year. That's right. <laughs> Ziegler fouls that one back. Full count. I'll tell you, my daughters took the trip to Connor Prairie today Ooh. up in Fishers, Indiana. Did, did you that take was a that fun trip? Ziggler. Did you do that? This one. Oh, wow. What a, catch. what a great play by the Beachwood second baseman. Um, and they've moved some positions around, but. I think that was Ryan Kirshner for Beachwood. Bri oh, Brian Kirshner makes it play. Ryan. All out diving catch over the shoulder. To retire Ziegler for the first down. And that's just another example of a ball <laughs> not falling for the Bluebirds, although that was a flare. It wasn't really hit that hard. Seems like they got more than seven guys out there. In the field. Yeah. <laughs> Trent, Trent Johnson. Trent another Johnson one. pretty much hits it to about the same place, but this will be an easier play. And Ziegler and Johnson are retired uh, in the air. 
to the second baseman. There's two down. So you took the trip, Nick. Which elementary school did you go to? I went to Johnson. You went to Johnson, so you did the same thing. Yeah. So my wife was a chaperone, and my daughters went up, and and they had a good time. Long bus ride, though, I hear. Long four, bus ride. Four hours. Nothing like the D.C. No, bus. Nothing, <laughs> like, nothing close. Yeah, that's, a, <laughs> that's a haul right at there. At the plate, we got first baseman Gabbard. Watch this. And it's one and one as that second pitch is in the dirt. So a pretty nice setting up here in the press box. Got all these cameras. and Gabbard rips one down the right field wow. line. That'll get and down. That'll, yeah, that's going to be down yeah, for a hit. Hold Trey up Gabbard, for a he put that into the right field corner. But uh, the Beachwood defender was hustling over and was able to to hold Gabbard to a long single. Casey Green up to the plate and now for the Birds. And we have a new batter for the Birds for right fielder Nolan Turner. It's going to be the senior, today's captain, Casey Green. So many good greens, all coming from St. Joe Cold Spring. They're about, I think, what is he, the last of three brothers and the his sisters one, on yep. our dance team. But um, when Ryan finished his career as a UC track star, he super fast. And, you know, one of the games in April, the Reds game, he did that race where he was dressed up like <laughs> an old-time Red player with a big mustache. And they let some guy that looks like he's about in my shape with a 30-meter <laughs> head start. And then they unleash Green, and they got 70 seconds to do this, and he just absolutely smoked it. I saw it on uh, YouTube. But, you know, you don't know you're running against a UC track star. This no. guy just thought he was running against another uh, one of the mascots, and he got smoked. <laughs> it's pretty funny to watch. And uh, you could tell the guy that was in my shape was running out steam. <laughs> Fall high and inside. So we've had Brad Green, Ryan Green, and now we have senior Case Green, another multi-sport athlete at Highlands, played a defensive back on the football team, and he's been a mainstay uh, on the baseball team, and he, he played basketball for three years here at Highlands as well. He chose not to come out for his senior year, but uh, another uh, another good one. Full count, two outs. He walked him, so... Um, Gabbard was on the move, but he'll, he will not get credited with the stolen base. And Green earns the walk. And the Birds got two on. If they can get a hit here, it looks like Coach Bione is going to make some sort of move uh, because he's coming down to talk to the home plate umpire, J.D. Young. And Young is taking out his pad and his writing. It looks like we'll have a pinch hitter. No, Stephen Grimmie's at the plate. It's uh, looks like we got maybe a Nick Robinson. Nick Robinson, you know, last year Nick Robinson, he's a heck of a good soccer player yes. here, and he's a good baseball player too. But Nick Robinson was the first male middle school middle school athlete, athlete of the year. Uh, the girls that won were Cecilia Schick and Macy Edinburgh, but Nick Robinson, I tell you, great athlete. Uh, it was a pretty easy yeah. choice for. <laughs> The um, middle school uh, principal and assistant principal myself to make that decision, and and Coach Nieder wrote him an, a really neat letter endorsing him for that award. But Nick Robinson with a healthy lead off second, but he retreats after Grimmy swings and misses. We got one and two on the batter, two down after the back-to-back -back pop flies to the Beachwood second baseman. Birds are threatening here. And that is hit hard and into the gap. And that's going to score Robinson easily and move Green all the way to third. And the Birds have a runner on the board and runners at the corners. So one in and two on for Highlands is Robinson running for Gabbard. Scores a run at Great American Ballpark. And Green hustles all the way around to third. So, an RBI single for Stephen Grimmy as he uh, counts Robinson. Green moves to third, and is that Winkler at the plate, yeah. Nick, or did yeah, they pinch that's Winkler. hit? He's still up there. No, Kyle Winkler remains in the ball game. Of course, he's only on his second at bat. 
Uh, he is the left fielder. I believe Winkler's a senior. Is that yes. right? That's what I thought. Wish we could Ooh. have him for another year, but Winkler hits one hard and deep. And the left fielder it is off, off the, the top, top of, of the wall. wall. Wow. That one almost and got he, out of here. And a couple runs are going to score for the Bluebirds, and Winkler stands on second, motions to the Highlands fans. And we finally have a reaction out of the Blue. <laughs> Boy, that hit the yellow tape. What a rip. Out in deep left field. The left fielder for Beachwood kept running, running, running. Green scores. And Grimmy scores, and the Bluebirds have cut the Beachwood lead to one with two down here in the fourth. Wow, was that <laughs> – it would be really something if you could say that you hit a home run out of Great American Ballpark, and that was as close as you get. That hit the yeah. top of the left field fence uh, and chased home two runners. That would have tied it up, too. For Kyle Winger, and that would have been a game-tying three-run homer. Boy – are we going to have a good game later in the season? I can feel oh, it coming. Man. Now, of course, both teams have to get there, and the bracket has to work out. And so there's many factors where they wouldn't meet each other, but there's also a chance they might. Boy, did Winkler put a bat on that ball. There's another hot shot, and it is Ethan Cavanaugh. He is a single, a double. I think now will be a good time for a triple. Yeah. And then one step close to that cycle. Yeah, we want it. yeah, that's right. And I would think that Coach Bione would have to go ahead and hit him. Although this looks like, yeah, it is Kavanaugh. Yeah. Counts even 2-2, two, two, two down here in the bottom half of the fourth. I think I said fifth earlier. The Birds have played at three. Kavanaugh, one of Highland's best hitters. Is at the plate. I saw our principal, Matt Pertasso, here. He was down on the field with us before the game and came up to the booth. And um, his wife, Julie. Wow, is that hit that hard. One. And that is down and into hits the left fielder for Beachwood <laughs> on one hop. That's going to score Winkler and tie the ball game. So Ethan Kavanaugh with a sharp single to left. And that's his third hit of the game. And the Bluebirds have come back to tie the game at four. It looks like Beach Winkler is out here. easily scored. I thought that ball was going to stay up there, Nick, and then he might catch it on a line drive, yeah. and I was just about to start crying again <laughs> talking about all these hard-hit balls. But it actually hit the thigh of the Beachwood left fielder uh, after a short hop right before it got to him. And Coach Gray is out on the mound talking to the Tigers. He has pulled the infield in, standing on the mound. Kavanaugh stands on first. And we have a timeout. And it would be Bridewell, but I think we might have a pinch hitter. I think the Bluebirds are sending up a pinch that hitter. Looks like news. It looks like number 27, Nate Gessenews. And he is the second baseman from time to time, yes. so he'll probably stay in the ball game. He, he was actually warm up to pitch, I believe, last inning. So really? He might come in. He may come in and take the hill. I've never seen him pitch a game now. I don't go to uh, a whole lot of the JV baseball, so he might pitch down there. He's a good pitcher. On that same summer ball, team I was talking about earlier, he okay. pitched behind Brennan. Well, you guys got a pretty good team then. Yeah. Good, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Nate Gasnew steps in. Two down, but the birds have done all kinds of damage after the first two. And remember the great play on the ball hit yeah. by Ziegler. So the Bluebirds would possibly be up 5-4 if it wasn't for a great play by the second baseman of Beachwood. That's way outside. and uh, That might have been a pitch out. On it Kevin looks like, first. Um, yeah, that might have been on purpose. Looks like Jacob Norton might be a little frustrated. He's watching Kavanaugh closely. I think they called for a pitch out. Being it is now a tie game, two outs, wants your guy in scoring position, but it's 2-0. Two, oh. two more like that, uh, and he's not going to need to worry about him being in scoring position because he's going to walk there. Yes, he uses the play. We could really use a hit here, Nate. Oh, it comes inside. I think Nate Gasney is one of those guys that's probably good at every sport, too. Yeah. I remember him in the middle school, and he was good at basketball, good at soccer, good at Baseball, he, he's, yeah, he's, he's on one of those. Team now. Yeah, he plays for the Highlands soccer team, and he he's a good. And he works a walk. 
from Norton, and he makes his way down to first. And like I said, Kavanaugh's in scoring position. Schwabach without the use of the uh, stolen base. And Schwabach comes to the plate, and the birds have officially batted around in the bottom half of four, and they have tied this ball game at four and actually have more hits than the Tigers. Yeah. Now we uh, have six hits to their three, but the Bluebirds have a couple of errors and a couple of pass balls and a couple of walks that contributed to their four. So let's see if we can get a timely hit by Cooper Schwabach. Now the last ball he hit was um, – Oh, no, that wasn't him. Who's the one who hit the ball off the wall earlier in the game for the Birds? I oh, was man. thinking it was Cooper. I'm not too sure. It might have been. It was. I believe it was. Uh, was it Kavanaugh? Yeah, it must have been Ethan Kavanaugh because the only other double is uh, Winkler, and his just happened. Yeah. It was the one where I lost it after I left the yeah. infield. Foul back by Schwabach. Two, two, two outs, two on for the birds. <coughs> Excuse me, Nick. <laughs> Curveball stays inside, Ooh. and he punches Schwabach out on strikes. And boy, Cooper doesn't like that call at all, Nick. That looked really close. Might have come over the plate there at the end. It looks like Coach Bione is going to have a word with the – oh, no, he's just going to make a sign. <laughs> I thought he might mention that pitch was a little inside. I'm sure he might say Schwabach something about it. Schwabach didn't like it. That will end the inning. Norton strikes out Schwabach. But the birds bat around. They got four hits, four runs, a walk, a couple of guys left on, and it's a new ball game. It looks like I'm going to have to change my pencil. <laughs> well, you brought plenty of them, it looks yeah, like. I know. I brought the whole. <laughs> Emptied out the desk. So we got a whole new infield and everything for the Bluebirds. Haggis still on the mound. Wholesale subs for the Bluebirds. It's like guest news moves Haggis to second. remains on the mound. Guest news goes to second. Widener's at third. Uh, Gabbard stays at first. Is uh, Widener a senior or junior? Widener's a junior. Junior, yeah, that's right. And I remember from his team uh, won the uh, intramural championship that's back right. in the day when Widener was in eighth grade. Beat that Huddleston squad. <laughs> but uh, Widener takes over at third. It looks like Johnson, or is that Mason Schwab? I think that looks like Schwabach. Yeah, it looks like Mason Schwabach might be in a catcher. Yeah. Kavanaugh stays in it short. I have no idea the outfit. It looks like Cooper's still in center. Let's see and if I take would a glance think here. that Winkler would stay in left and say hit for him. They let him hit. Nevertheless, pretty much a new look group for the Birds. Yeah, so I would imagine the same thing's happening on the other side. It looks like Aiden Hutton is done for the day. And the Tigers are going to send up a pinch hitter. Yeah, we got Winkler in left, Schwabach in center, and Casey Green out in right. Oh, in that's right. Casey Green went to right field. I knew that one because he hit for Turner. All right, who's 42 on your list? 42 there, for Beechwood. We got Xavier Campbell. Xavier Campbell in to hit to lead off the fifth for the Tigers. First pitch strike there for Haggis. Xavier Campbell. Straight up, straight up, and they'll come foul back. ball, and it's going to be quickly. High gets up on Campbell, zero and two. I'll tell you what, I've been lucky this year. My first year as athletic director, uh, in the fall and the spring, we have nine conference players of the year. Wow, that is big. Both That's soccer huge. teams, Lindsey Meyer and Alex Ford. Girls cross country, Maggie Schroeder. Boys golf, Ryan Lee. Haggis gets a three-pitch strikeout. And there. the winner ones, I'm not sure, have been announced yet, but we have five from the winter sports. Haggis strikes out the pinch hitter, Campbell, for out number one to start the top half of the fifth. Now, last time we started off an inning with a strikeout 
they went on to score a well. couple runs. So hopefully that's not a trend. And it's it's a new hitter. Thirty three, Mister. Thirty three. We got Tanner Schultz. Tanner Schultz steps in. He'll replace Devin Johnson at least in the batting order. He gets. Rips one down the left field line, breaks foul. Schultz hits one pretty deep, but it, it wrapped around foul. Uh, not quite to the warning track, but a pretty deep, deeply hit ball. Winkler gave chase. So nine players a year. We had a, another signing day. It feels like yeah. I do two or three a week. <laughs> it was Garrett Crow and Alex Ford. Sign. That's a sharp uh, single to left by the pinch hitter. Schultz. Tanner Schultz, and uh, the Tigers have a base runner here in the fifth with one down. We had Garrett Crow and Alex Ford. They signed to join Nick Gish, Colton uh, Dolezal. Dolz Alex's and, brother, Alan. And Alan Ford, all in the Thomas Moore uh, men's soccer team. So a lot of Highlands flavor out there, five of them. Yeah. And uh, Crow had a lot of fire to that lineup. And uh, Alex Ford, I mean, he was – Everybody's defender of the yes. year. The team, the ninth region. He made that uh, United States soccer coaches all Great Lakes Valley region, which, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not in tune with national soccer, <laughs> but Coach Nieder told me that is very hard yes. to make that. That's a regional award that covers several states in the Midwest and in the Great Lakes Valley, obviously, and that's a tough award uh, to win, a tough team to make. And he was named that. So Thomas Moore is getting a good one. Yes. And basically, Alex said in his press conference, "Well, if I well, wasn't six not four, six four <laughs> then I'm not going to Division One." But it seemed like he was a little uh, upset by that. So maybe, <laughs> I, know, I told him he could be one of those grad transfers. Yeah. Maybe you know, he, he gave him he, idea. He's super smart. Yes. So was Allen. Now I had Allen in class. I didn't have the pleasure of an Alex, but <laughs> got to know him this year yeah. through soccer. And boy, did they have a good team. Yeah. And uh, last week, last Thursday, was the Cincy Sports Awards. Coach Richie, Jamie Richie, myself, Coach Nieder, and about the whole men's soccer team. Whole soccer team. team. Uh, we had Mac Russell, a swimmer there. Uh, Coach Alessandro, Maggie Schroeder was up for player of the year, as was Alex. And uh, Carter Holmes, half court. Uh, half field another shot. Another pass ball, and Campbell moves to second. Half field shot to start the state semifinal off against Dunbar. With the, it, it turned out to be the game winning goal. It was unbelievable, but Man. evidently the team had been working on it for a couple. Yeah, weeks. Yeah, it was two or three weeks we were practicing it, and actually one of our former coaches, JV coach uh, Jeremy Frank, called Coach and he was like, "Hey, see, Carter still got that foot that I remember." And we tried it out, and sure enough, he could do it in his sleep. So decided to do it against Hopkinsville. Worked out pretty well. <laughs> Did work out pretty well. And, and and if you watch the tape, you can't really see, but right before he kicked off, the goalie was out of his box yeah. clapping his defense up, you know, trying to get him fired up. And, boy, did that come back to haunt him. Um, but a great year by the boys' soccer team, Lawson State Island, St. Xavier, and the girls as well. Boy, that was fun run. We're going to have a courtesy or a pinch runner for Beachwood. It's going to be number zero. Looks like we got Zachy Desai, Jr. Okay. So Desai replaces Schultz out on second base. Kind of an odd substitution there. Maybe Schultz had a pulled muscle, or maybe he wasn't leading off as far as Coach Gray wanted. Ground ball to first. Gabbard takes it himself. Retires. Um, was that Norton on the ground? Was that number seven or nine? Oh, uh, like yeah. Nine. I think it was. Norton here. <coughs> Retires Norton on the ground for out number two. So Gabber took it himself. Uh, of course, the new runner, Desai, moved over to third on the ground ball to the right side. Who we got hitting here? So we got 32, Cole Stammer, and he rips one towards the left field. Winkler gets under it, though. Good. And that'll be a third wow. out. Wow. How do you spell that last name? Uh, S-T-A-M-M-E-R. So Cole Stammer flies out to kind of deep left field, and Kyle Winkler took care of it, and the Bluebirds get out of that. Um, Beachwood leaves a runner standing on third in um, Desai, and uh, still a tie ball game. So it was all Beachwood early, 
And then the Bluebirds had a big inning late, uh, last inning, and were able to tie the ball game. All that with two outs, two last inning. Got four across there. It's time to change pencils, Nick. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. We were talking about Players of the Year Award, and I don't think it's any mystery who won the Conference Player of the Year for girls basketball. Yeah. I Won't mean, let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> but uh, it may or may not be our second all-time leading scorer on the girls' side, Zoe Barth. And uh, she recently decided to attend Thomas, Thomas Moore, Moore, and they've won a national title. So, she jumps onto that bench, and I'm sure she'll improve them. Oh, yeah. And if not, if it's not with her scoring and her athleticism, it'll certainly be with her grade point average. Mm -hmm. I think she's uh, in the top five of her senior class in grades and an Man. excellent example of a Highland student athlete in Zoe Barth. And uh, I'd be shocked if she didn't win a couple more players. Yeah. Award. I know that Alex Ford, the boys' soccer player we were talking to, and Zoe have been nominated for the Buddy LaRosa Athlete of the Year and those have not been announced, but just to be nominated yeah. is uh, saying something. All right, we're set to start the bottom half of the inning here, bottom half of five, and it's going to be our quarterback, Grady, Grady Kramer. Kramer, another three-sport athlete for the Bluebirds. I'll tell you, I've run out of room. <laughs> uh, they have pinch hit in this spot about every other inning. So... Uh, I'm going to erase Higgins, who never batted, and pop Grady in there. Um, he threw 105 pitches yesterday <laughs> against Moeller, so he would not be eligible to throw, but he is eligible to bat. Kramer will, has recently signed Tuesday with Moorhead State. He'll play uh, football there for the Eagles, and a lot of people were – not a lot of people, but some people are surprised that he didn't choose baseball because he is a heck of a good yeah. uh, pitcher. Only gave up five hits to the Crusaders even though they lost, but boy, can he throw um, pitches as well as he can throw football. So he's going to join the Eagles football team next year. Now when rips down third base line, good wow, backhand. play yeah, by across the diamond, they got baseman. him. And Kramer visibly upset after that. It put out his 5-3 and uh, another one of those hard hit balls. But, boy, did he hit that. And uh, great backhand by the beach with third base. Who is over Jack there? Jack Flaherty. So J Jack Flaherty moved from the pitcher's mound to third and makes a nice play on Kramer's ground ball. Ooh, good we got a ball. new hitter here. It looks like Mason Schwabach, right? Yeah, uh, Schwabach. So Mason Schwabach replaced Chen Johnson behind the plate, and he will with the bat as well as he stands in. <laughs> behind 0-2. Yeah, it's uh, Colin Dill. On the mound? Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Number eight. So Dill on the mound for... Beachwood throws a curveball in the dirt. It's one and two on the hitter Schwabach, not Cooper Mason, his little brother. He's a junior. But what a nice play by Mrs. Flaherty's son Jack over there at third, getting Kramer on the ground for uh, the first out of the inning. It's always important to get that leadoff hitter on, and he uh, made was sure able that didn't to take happen. that away. Yeah. Uh, Another curveball from Dill. Schwabach Spelled D I L L E. So I'm and a silent E. Still a silent, yeah. Counts four on Schwabach, one down. That one's outside. And he walked him, and I bet you that. I bet you that we're going to have a courtesy runner for the catcher, Schwabach, and we do. Who's coming out of the dugout there? Let's see who we got. So, Dill walks Schwabach. He makes his way to first and back to the dugout. We got Can't sophomore really... John Barth. Looks on like first John base. Barth out of the dugout. And we're going to have the coach's son, number 12, Braden Bione, replacing Trey Gabbard at first. So, Bione steps And that's a pass in. ball, and Barth will get to second easily. Yep, pass ball. Barth moves up. 
Barth's a heck of a ball player. His yeah. mom teaches math at Highlands. <clears throat> it seems like he's been on the baseball team forever. He yeah. was in one of those <laughs> years where the middle schoolers could try out. And even though he's only a sophomore, he's been around a while. Yeah. Has Barth. Pione, the lefty, swings through that one. Looked like a breaking ball from Dill. And evens the count 1-1. One, one. Now, Bione, I think he's been having a pretty good year, hitting something like 360 last time I looked at the stats for the JV team. And there's, and there's a shot one. to left, Not but get down. a good diving catch. catch by the left fielder for Beachwood. Wow. Two great I thought that plays. was going to the gap, but it curved back toward the line, and it gave the Tigers left fielder a chance to catch up with it, dive, and make the play. Nice hit by Bione, but... Retired in left. Casey Green up to bat again for the Bluebirds. Two down, and we got Green. He walked and scored last time. Another breaking ball comes outside. Dill throwing a lot of breaking balls, Nick. It looks so like we started naming sports and people and programs at Highlands, so we've obviously forgot somebody. You know, it was administrative assistant day. Uh, Wednesday at Highlands, and we had all of the administrative assistants. Mine is Mrs. Kathy Eaton, and she does a great job yes. with everything from collecting fees to paying the bills and uh, everything you could think of. She just did the um, package for the 36 district baseball and softball tournaments, and yeah, well, she's uh, been does a great job. I've been I've known her since kindergarten. She was my assistant teacher in kindergarten. So. Yeah, she came over from yeah. Moyer with Mr. Haskamp, but yep. she decided to stick around and uh, help me out this year, and it's been a great help. But also, Mr. Bertasso's assistant is Mary Geiger, and Mr. Gay has Mrs. Vermeil, and the counseling office has Mrs. Rickett, and Lisa Bilt, our school nurse, and uh, Jenny Waggers down there at the um, – on the uh, first floor there, and she helps out a lot. So they, Mr. Bertasso treated them to lunch. He went to Fort Thomas Public House. And, uh, I think they had a good time. I was down in Louisville at the state AD conference, so I missed it, but I heard a good time was had by all, and it was much appreciated. So it's that not often where the ladies get to, to third. sit together for an hour and over lunch all together. And Barth moves to third on another uh, – I mean, that was kind of a pass ball. That should have been caught. Green's at the plate. It's a full count with two outs. Uh, Barth moves to third. He's running for Schwabach, who walked. There are two outs, and Green at the plate, and, and he strikes, strikes out. out. And Outside that'll end pitch. it. Birds leave the go-ahead run on third, and um, Dill gets out of it. Quick little update here for the Bengals draft. Just got an off outside linebacker, Jermaine Pratt from NC State. Wow, I've never there. heard. What is his name? Jermaine Pratt. Never heard of him. Played his first two years as a free safety. Wow, so. and then he, he's one of those hybrid linebacker yeah. deals. That's kind of a new thing, I think, to put yeah. a faster, crazy guy there. <laughs> if you're going to be in a linebacker in the NFL, I don't think uh, – Nice stuff for the Bengals to get someone to replace perfect. So, Yeah, I mean, I know they were hoping to get Devin Bush, but yeah. the Steelers jumped up and got him, and that stinks. Um, so they took offensive lineman uh, Jonah Williams in the first round. And well, the birds make a little noise getting Barth all the way to third, but – Leave him stranded, and uh, it remains four to four. What really any hits there? Just a, a walk and a couple of pass balls. So, be nice that the birds can win this one, even though I know that I know that everybody's playing. Yeah. Um, but. All the guys on both teams are competitive, yeah. and they're going to try their hardest. I mean, even on your summer league team, you don't yeah. like to lose. No. You're trying to win the ball game. So, hopefully the Bluebirds can end this 20-game winning streak by the Tigers. It's like they got a platoon Bluebirds do going down to the bullpen. So, we might have a couple new yeah, faces on the mound. Yeah, <laughs> five birds out of the dugout into the bullpen, um, which is probably a cool experience down there. Yeah, I've never yeah. been in the bullpen, but – 
to warm up in a major league bullpen has got to be kind of neat. Um, and one of the Highlands coaches down there to help him out. Saw John Reynolds back in the dugout today. Yeah. Uh, he's a volunteer coach. He used to be full-time. That is a line drive. Casey Green off on the catch. Off the bat of. Johnny Caps. Johnny Caps. And uh, he is retired in the air by Green. So Caps hit it hard. But he is out number one as he flew out to green and right. Jacob Kinder up to bat. What, Ginder, what, pardon me. What Beecher. number is he? Number 10. Jacob Gid Ginder. Ginder. Ginder, Ginder. <laughs> we'll well, go Ginder. either way. He's and he batting. ropes he on deep is. left field. Wow. That'll go off. Bounce off the that warning track off, off the, the wall. warning track off the and wall. he might get three Scoots on this away. one. No, he ran out of steam there. <laughs> uh, Ginder put a charge into it for the Tigers, and they have a one-out double. Boy, that was hit hard. It was uh, one hop the warning track and off the wall, and Ginder has himself a stand-up double. I, If it would have been Castleman speed, it might have been an inside the park. Yeah. Run. <laughs> it was hit deep, and it, it stayed squirted out there. away. Yeah. From Schwabach. Ryan Kirschner batting now for the, the Tigers. Another sophomore. He pops one up. Looks like he's drifting foul near the dugout. Drops into the Beachwood dugout. Number 15, Ryan Kirchner. So the Tigers have a runner in scoring position with one down. One strike after the foul ball. Hopefully we can retire Kirchner here. Ooh. Now Higgis has uh, been on the mound quite a while. I think so it's his third inning, even yeah. Even though Highlands has, um, you know, weaved in several players off the bench, they have uh, still only on their second pitcher. And here comes the – Pinch runner again, number zero. Zachy Desai. Desai. But it, it's strange because it's a, a late-inning substitution, like a mid-inning yeah. running substitution. They did that last time. So Desai with a nice lead off second. High gets to the plate, stays inside, and counts two and one on Kirchner. Swung through that one. That might have been his change up there. 2-2. Two, two. Pretty far ahead there. Yeah, it looked like a change up. Desai with a kind of a big lead off second, uh, especially after he takes that secondary lead. And that's a number right out in front of the mound. Mason Schwabach gobbles it up, throws Kirchner out, and not before Desai moves to third. Um, but the putout goes 2-3 as Schwabach Tossed on to Bione, and there are two down. But we go back to the top of the lineup, and if we got Ben Meyer, a freshman, what in number the is he? The freshman Ben 24. Meyer, twenty-four, number twenty-four. Two outs, Ben on Meyer third comes in in a big spot. He will be very popular in the Beachwood hallways tomorrow if he can come up with a two-out hit in the top of the sixth, which would put the Tigers in front. And you know what? Nick, you got to watch for those pass balls as yeah. well. We've seen a couple runners, one for each side, or maybe even two for Beachwood, yeah. come in on just simple pitches in the dirt that would not result in a run scored in the high school stadiums. But here at Great American, it is a real problem. Hey, just comes inside for those two side with a big lead off third, and that ball is way inside. One, two, two outs. Higgis doesn't want to throw anything over the plate with the 0-2 count, but you got to make sure that it gets to the glove of Schwabach. He comes right at him. It looks like it's going to be a pop-up, up, and oh, he dropped it. Glove. Um, in foul but territory. I think Higgis was in foul territory. So, Bione and Higgis look like there might have been a communication issue. Higgis looked under. I think he just went off the heel of his glove <laughs> and there. Higgis stuck his glove out. He was afraid. I think they were afraid they are going to run into yeah. each other. And it got away from Higgins. Let's see if Meyer can make that hurt. Usually when you give a hitter second life, 
That's when it, it gets doesn't you. turn out well for you. We got one and two on the batter, two down. Hygis is getting another baseball. Meyer at the mound. I mean, at the plate. <laughs> Hygis on the mound. Desai, here he comes. Fights wow, that Desai one off. was coming to the plate, but it was fouled straight back. Uh, Desai trying to put pressure on the Bluebird defense. Is that Widener still out there at yeah. third? Looks like tall. How tall do you think Widener so, is? 6'5", maybe? 6'5". He, he's a tall guy. And Rips it that is one a too, Widener. Chopper to Widener. He gobbles it up. He all double oh. clutch. And it's nope. It's like the, and Ben Meyer is going to be the hero with an infield single. And it would have been a tough play for any third baseman. Yeah, it looked like a tough transfer there. It was there. a chopper. It was slowly hit. Uh, Desai was coming to the plate. And he scores, and the Tigers take a 5-4 to four lead. Another freshman up to bat for the Tigers, Parker Mason, number three. Mason, ground ball to second. Oh. Booted. He recovered. Oh, Bionni drops the ball at first, and we got – that is the rare two errors on one play. You don't see that very often. No, you do not. That was what was the number on the batter? Um, Another new batter. Parker Mason, number three. Parker Mason, ground ball to second. It was bobbled, kicked, thrown, caught, dropped, and there's runners at first and second. <laughs> and now up to bat for the Tigers, number 20, Luke Middendorf. Middendorf in for Xavier Campbell. Boy, they have a lot of players. <laughs> I think I filled every single. Oh, and that one hits him. And just and like that, the bases are the loaded. Pitch, and the bases are juiced. And remember, Nick, the dropped foul ball. Yeah, you said and it. And again, it, all, it never works out. <laughs> uh, so we got a hit by pitch. And the bases are loaded with two down, one in. Johnny Caps up to 25. Bat. Haggis comes to the plate. That one's ripped, and that just gets foul. Would have been a couple runs across, probably, for the Tigers. That one stayed fair. Wow. One strike on Caps. Haggis sits. That one pops up. Shallow right field. Guess he used it under it, and the Bluebirds so get out of that one. Takes care of the fly ball by Caps. That'll win the top of the six, but. They got one. Scored a run on a couple, couple errors and a couple hits. Well, that's a bummer. Could have been more, though, so. Yeah. Left three. So Beachwood, five run on six hits. Uh, the Bluebirds have committed four errors. Six left on base for the Tigers. Only two earned runs for the Bluebird pitching staff. And who we got going down there? We're up for the Bluebirds to see if we can catch a number. We have Grimmy and Winkler, but I'm not sure that's actually going to be the hitters. Yeah, I'm sure. So the Tigers lead at five to four. The Bluebirds have three errors. The official score of the press box only gave one error on the play. I went ahead and gave two because of the the drop, bobble, the bobble at second, and the drop then on the, the hurried first. throw, then the drop ball at first. But I'm not an official scorer, so I don't know. Sounds like maybe you should be. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> With number 16 in the – Number 16 up the back. Luke Widener yep. is in the uh, on-deck circle. So, yeah, he'll be hitting for Grimmy. Uh, 
All right, Widener steps in, the senior. Junior. While Beachwood's put, or the junior. While Beachwood's putting the freshman up, we, we're still going through our, <laughs> our juniors and seniors. Well, I don't think we took sophomores. As, as many freshmen and sophomores as Beachwood did. That's here. correct. So we have Luke Widener. And Ooh. he, um, I know he singled against Prosser because they have the uh, dugout Twitter account that run yeah. by Colin Hollingsworth, and, and he had a, some footage of Widener singling against Prosser. The birds won that one out at St. Mary's. Oh, man. 20 to 4. He's been two good pitches for Widener. Looks like he's just getting out ahead of him or behind him. Widener has been up there hacking, and it's 0 2 after a couple of foul balls. Curveball, and Widener hits it in the air and into the Lexus Diamond Club. <laughs> Who we have on the mound for the Tigers this inning? Uh, for Tigers, let's see if we can get a number. Looks like 22. 22? If I had to guess, but I could be wrong. Oh. 22 or 23. So it would be 23. We don't have 22 on the roster. Zach Norris. Zach Norris on the mound for the Tigers now this inning. Goes in the dirt. 1-2 pitch. Inside. Well, Widener's up there giving it his all. He's got a nice at bat. Uh, come back from the 0-2. It's evened up at 2-2. Stands in. Norris to the plate. Oh, wow. Brings <laughs> him up. I don't know about all that. It looked a little outside. But uh, nevertheless, J.D. Young punches Widener out on strikes for out number one. I'm not sure Coach Bione agreed with that one. Uh, <laughs> when the catcher's glove turns backwards and reaches into the left-handed batting. Owen area. Karras up to bat. Swings and misses on his first attempt. Owen Karras. He's batting for Winkler. Number five, Karras. First pitch is a swing strike. Curveball comes in off the glove and for a ball. Time for pencil number four now. <laughs> I only got two left, so I've been through three. <laughs> Pitches outside, 2-2 two, two on Karras. You know, when we're at Highlands and I'm announcing, Mr. Green brings me a hot dog and a bottle <laughs> of water every game. I don't give that kind of treatment here at Great American. Not at all. Well, Nick doesn't get his ice cream either. <laughs> Ground ball to short. He throws. Off and the it base. is wide of the bag. And Karras is going to reach on the throwing air. So maybe the birds will take advantage of a miscue. Karras is going to be replaced. It looks like number 30. 34. For Jake Gully. Jake Gully going to run? Or no, on the base, Batten's Jake Gully. <coughs> Gully is going to hit for Kavanaugh. Jack but Schneider. It is Jack Schneider running. For Karras. Good block there by the Beecher Catcher. Pitch in the dirt. Well, it's a nice opportunity. I'd like to thank before. The game ends, and I forget it, Allie Gruber and Max yes. Sample for setting all this up. Kathy Eaton for doing a lot of the paperwork and selling of the tickets and keeping track of all that stuff. Um, like to thank Coach Bione for let – Wow, Ooh, right up the middle. Hard. Wow. That'll squeeze through. Through, through the pitcher, through the middle. And it was hit so hard, Nick, that really we couldn't run. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, the pitcher avoided injury there. Yes. That – came back to the mound really quickly but luckily low and it not only got through him it got through the middle infield of Beachwood and the birds have a couple runners on and I have seen gully pitch this year never seen him hit but if he hits uh every ball like that perhaps he should hit more this should be Nate Gessney unless we hit yep. for him the lefty Gessney stands in two on one down birds are down a run here in the bottom of the sixth but I was thanking people that helped make the big league weekend happen. And, of course, 
Mr. Paul for sending his broadcast crew, uh, Mrs. Eaton for doing all the work there with the ticket sales and everything else. There was a lot that goes into this. It doesn't look like it. you think you just show up and play, but Coach Bione had to collect waivers from it. I mean, it was it was a tremendous amount of work to get this done, and I'd like to thank the Bluebird fans for coming out and supporting their team and uh, buying the tickets. It was a $10 ticket. You get to watch the – the, this game and then and the Reds. back on April 10th, uh, the Marlins and Reds. And the Reds won that one 2-1. to one. Back to, like, a home run, then an out, then another home run in the end. <laughs> so we got to see a winner that night on Highlands Night. And we unveiled the new mascot. Thanks yeah. to Highlands Athletic Boosters for uh, purchasing the mascot. It was a big price tag on that, but first one in a long time. And was custom made in Canada, Ooh. and a lot went into that. Mrs. Sarah Casanas did a ton to get all that. I mean, it went from drawings to <laughs> sculpt. Uh, you know, they made a plaster yeah. thing, and wow, was there a lot of emails, that, you know, proofs <laughs> that went back and forth. And Maggie Abner is the president of our booster club, and she does a lot, and Nate Gassney's earned a walk, and – you know, last inning, Nick, we had the Tigers with bases loaded. Now we got the Bluebirds with the bases juiced. One down, down a run, and it is Jason No up Jason to bat. Jason No, boy, is he dangerous. So he replaces Schwabach, and we talked about him. He's an excellent football, basketball, and baseball player, and he stands in, and it could it's Ooh. a curveball right down the middle. I'm sure no would want to have that one back, but who can blame him for looking fastball on the first pitch here? Uh, we need Jason No right here, and that ball is high and in, 1-1. One, one. But if No can put one in the grass out there, we can score a couple. Get first lead of the night. That would be nice. Wow, No drives one, one to left field. That's going to chase their – Outfitter back, and that'll easily score the runner from third. And the Bluebirds have tied the ball game. And Gully hustling from second to third. He tags up as well. And an RBI sack fly for the sophomore Jason No. And here's Grady Kramer up two outs. Two down. Kramer grounded out hard to Flaherty in third last inning. And We'll see if he can what he can do, but uh, the runner for Karras was Jack Schneider, and he scores the tying run for the Birds here in the bottom half of six. So Beachwood loads him up and scores a run. The Birds load him up and score one. We are still alive here with two down and need to hit another first another pitch slow curveball. Curve those look like they are juicy from up here. <laughs> You'd like to have one of those on the summer league team, I bet. <laughs> Wow. But, I mean, the guys are probably out there looking fastball when that thing comes in. Catching them off guard. And there it is. That's what you do for yep. it. Come back with a fastball. And he comes back with a fastball and blows it by Kramer, who's quickly down. Oh, no, I guess they call that curveball oh, I guess a so. ball. Okay. So, it's 1-1. One, one. It looked look good <laughs> to me, it was but right. we'll take it. J.D. Young uh, called it a ball. So, it's 1-1 one, one on Kramer. Ooh. And uh, another fastball down the middle, and it's quickly 1-2. Uh, guessing you swipe second without a throw. I'm not sure if that's a stolen base or not. I think it is. In this situation, it is. I think it is, yeah. <clears throat> Big lead for Gully off third. Curveball. Curve Kramer knew it Gets and drives through. it into left field. Guessing you's is Two coming runs around. into the score. Gully. Guessing you's and the Bluebirds. Take their first lead of the night. Now it'll be a two run lead. So after night. four innings and nothing and hard hit balls right at people, the birds have played in seven in the last two. Wow, I right, Kramer waited on that curveball, Nick, and he put it yeah. right in the six hole. Uh and with the shortstop toward the bag, kind of paying attention to Gas and Hughes. Um just enough space to get under his glove. Yeah. And it was hit hard enough, too. Yeah. I could tell it was going to be a single uh, right off the bat. And um, Grady Kramer with a couple RBIs. The uh, 
Moorhead State football signee, still not done with his high school baseball career. He puts the birds up too here in the bottom of the sixth. Standing in here, who we got? Mason Schwabach. Takes that pitch high inside. So what kind of classes you got this year, Nick? This Taking year, the AP class. Got a couple AP classes. I actually have my AP Those line. AP exams are coming up. I got my AP line, my AP macroeconomics exam on the same day. So that would wow. be a great yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're well prepared. <laughs> uh, yeah. Miss Antonio and Miss Carter getting me ready. <laughs> All right. We got Mason Schwabach at the plate. Kramer with a big two RBI single. That's a four and pitch walk for Schwabach. A four pitch walk for Mason Schwabach. And the Birds have a couple on with two down. So that Coach Gray's out. So that AP testing window, that's a big deal at Highlands. I mean, um, they had a field test earlier in the week that Miss yeah. Walsh was running. And. Kudos to the uh, counseling department at Highlands for always getting that testing stuff done and um, making sure the kids are taking the appropriate classes to get the appropriate credits as they move on from high school to college. And there's going to be a pitching change for the Tigers, Nick. Yeah. See if you can Let's catch a number. And in. the Bluebirds hustling somebody else to the bullpen. And they're running like they're on fire now. <laughs> So we have a pitching change as the Tigers relief pitcher warms up. We'll try to catch a uniform number. I think I see a 14. 14. Um, I would like to say we have a 14, but not Doesn't on the look, roster. No, there's 14 didn't make the roster, but it is a mixed roster yeah. of both JV and varsity players tonight, so it's not the norm. Nick will look it up on his computer, but. See what we got here. They only play seven innings in high school baseball. So it would be a five, fifth inning stretch <laughs> if we wanted to play take me out to the ball game. But <laughs> in high school baseball, they only play seven innings. Now looking like we have a 14. Well, I guess we got someone from JV or freshman team. Well, it has um, been a long game with so many subs, yeah. substitution and pitching changes. Um you know, it, it makes for a long ball game. Yes. going to be the first baseman, Braden Bione, to face the new pitcher for Beachwood, number 14. Let me see if he's on my um, list that Katie Murphy sent me from Beachwood today. 14. No, she didn't have a 14 either, but it's all good. So the nameless Tiger will take the mound facing the left-handed hitting Bione. Bione hit one pretty well last time up, but was uh, there was a nice play made by the Beachwood defense. Bione smokes one. Oh, I got fooled. <laughs> it looked like good off the bat, but it was a low liner into short left, left center field, yeah. and the shortstop made the play, and that will end the inning. Looked good off the bat, sounded good off the bat, but uh, no dice. Uh, the Bluebirds and their six, but they take their first lead, seven to five. They played it three. And if they can hold So Beecher after here. all that, I get fooled again. You didn't even try <laughs> to help me out there. You just made me look like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, I wasn't quite sure either. But I'll tell you what, sure he put a nice swing on it, sounded yeah. good, but it just didn't go as far as as I thought. I should have known by the body language of the left fielder that it wasn't coming out there, but 
three runs, two hits, two walks, an error, sacrifice fly. Looks like on the mound we got a familiar what, name. Two got, left on. Yes, two left on. On the mound we have a familiar, familiar name for Highlands Baseball. We have Rom, Evan Rom. Oh, on Evan Rom coming out of the dugout. From the dugout to the mound comes Evan and the older brother Drew. Well publicized pitching for single A Delmarva out of the Orioles organization. I'm sure if he could be, he'd be listening. He's a huge Highlands fan. Highlands baseball fan still comes around. Um, I know he spent some time at Moyer this year, yeah. maybe even Johnson, and spends his free time helping the kids of Fort Thomas. Well, his little brother, number 17, Evan Rahm, is taking the mound here in the seventh inning. And hopefully, Nick, he can shut the door yeah. like his brother Drew, and we can go home a 7-5 winner. Uh, and Zeke can get home to eat his turkey. <laughs> His turkey dinner. <laughs> Zeke Plymaster up in the booth was worried that the game went nine innings, but it only goes seven in high school. So he wanted to make sure he was home to heat up his turkey roll. <laughs> so the nameless pitcher for Beach was going to take <laughs> a shot at hitting number 14. We don't have him on the roster. He's going to be the first batter that Rom faces. It's Evan Rom. He also a multi-sport athlete for Hounds. Plays on the basketball team. And his brother Drew was a heck of a good soccer player. Yes, at he was. He did not play his senior year, but was really good. Um, almost and, like and, and Rom played basketball too. Almost like if Alex Ford's wish came true, he played center back right where Alex played, and he's a taller guy, same speed, yeah. same build. I did not know he played the same <laughs> yeah. position as Alex. Well, Alex had one heck of a junior and senior year, yes. so I'm sure he was just fine yeah. with Drew Rom <laughs> not playing soccer. All right, here we go. It's Rom versus number 14 of the Tigers. <laughs> Rom to the plate, and that is a first pitch strike. Is it looked like a fastball to me on the outside corner? JD Young raises his right arm. Rom to the plate, Ooh. and he throws that one in the dirt, and it's one one. So he overthrew that one. Yep. So I don't know if all the Bluebirds got to play or all the Tigers, but they certainly gave me a workout over here on the <laughs> scorebook. I can't. I just kind of stopped writing in pitchers because I ran out of room, but yeah. I tried to keep up with the hitters. Good also you pitch there from Rob. One and two. One, two pitch. Mr. Bertasso just commented, from his seat in the stands that he he uh, remembers when he threw out the first pitch on April 10th. It was it was in the dirt a little bit, but he he was able to get it over there. He insisted on throwing from the rubber. <laughs> There's up Ground the ball middle. up the middle. It's going to be a slow roller. Fielded, thrown, and there is one down. Put out goes 6-3. Nate G on and the play. Nate G has moved from second to short for the Birds this inning, and he gobbled that up and made the play for Highlands. And there is one down in the seventh, and we are two outs away from a victory. Let's see who we got. It looks like a new batter. I have Stammer. In yeah, the I think book. it is Stammer. Okay, Stammer at the plate. Rom pumps pitch. in another first pitch strike. Stammer flew out to left field last time. And um, I hope that if he hits the left field this time, he it looks like we're playing a little shallow. Nick. Playing a little shallow, I'd say. Now, we mentioned how the outfield was drawn in more than the Major League Ball Club, but that's really shallow. Yeah, that's shallow even for Highland Park. Yeah. <laughs> so, Stammer is a smaller guy, maybe one of their freshmen. He swings through, and that is strike three, and the Tigers are down to their final out. And Rom 
Looks like he's rolling right here. I don't want to jinx him, but that is out number two. And if they stay with their batter from last inning, they'll be Caps, who flew out to right field. I think we got Jack Flaherty. And that's right a now. bouncer up the middle. Flaherty Nate G comes in. And it's gobbled up by Nate G, and that's the ball game. And it was Nate Gasson who's making the charging throw, retiring Flaherty on the ground as he threw to Bione. And that'll be the final out of the ball game. And the Bluebirds come from behind to give the Beachwood Tigers their first loss of the season 20-1. and one. And I hope it's not an omen from last year when the Birds lost on this very field to the Colonels of Covenant Catholic. Yeah. And then were able to defeat the Colonels in the finals of the ninth region. But we know it was a different kind of ball game, Nick, where all the players on both yeah. sides, at least they tried to get them all in. From the looks of it, they did. Uh, in one way or another, while whether it be running, pitching, hitting, or playing the full game. But the Birds played seven in the last two, and they take the the game 7-5. Uh, the Birds out hit the Tigers 8-6, to six, and um, they tagged the Bluebirds with three errors, and I tagged them with four, four. and one for the Tigers. So... I don't really know who gets the win. I'm going to say it's Brennan Higgis uh, so. with Evan Rahm with the save uh, for the Birds and the loss. There were so many different pitchers <laughs> for Beachwood. I don't remember who was in when uh, the Birds scored uh, the, that, that yeah. go-ahead run on the hit by Kramer. But that gentleman would take the loss, and that's the first one for the Tigers. So the Birds improved to 17-5. and five. The Beachwood drops their first game of the season and go to 20-1. and one. But we know, Nick, that we have not heard the last from the Beachwood no. Tigers. They have good teams. They went to the regional final in basketball, although the Birds did defeat them in boys' basketball uh, this year at Highlands. But they had a – state championship football team and they have a heck of a good baseball team and I certainly wouldn't want to see Logan Castleman for seven <laughs> no. or, or uh, Odom. John Odom, John Odom. Uh, either so well I'd like to thank Coach Bione his whole entire staff again Max Sample from the Cincinnati Reds, Allie Gruber who was here to help us out tonight our principal Matt Bertasso our assistant principal and Beachwood graduate Jeff Schneider he was probably Rooting for the Bluebirds, <laughs> but he used to play baseball yeah. for the Beachwood Tigers. So, uh, and uh, my assistant uh, Kathy Eaton for all the work she did, um, and Nick, thank you for coming yeah. to talk to me for <laughs> seven innings. And Mr. Paul's broadcasting crew is Nick Caldwell, Zach Baxter, and Zeke Plymaster bringing you this game from Great American Ballpark, and it was. Final score, Highland 7, Beachwood 5, and the Bluebirds will take a day off and the Tigers will go play in the All-A State Tournament tomorrow. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time, and it'll probably be around Highland Park. Good night.